Oh, sorry, drop that. Okay, we're running a little behind time, so I'm going to try and keep introductions tight. Our next speaker, Kathleen Hall Jameson, has uh, been, I was going to say Manning, she has been personing the frontier. She has been uh, one of our leading watchdogs on trying to get uh, quality and facts uh, more uh, prominent in uh, our media. Uh, she's here to talk to us today about a new project uh, to flack check uh, the media, especially in this election year. Uh, I give you Kathleen Hall Jameson. How do we increase the likelihood this year that worthy candidates aren't defeated in the wash of money that was unleashed by Citizens United and is being put in service of third party deception? We can flack check political sleaze. We can do it in three ways. First, most people don't realize that political advertising by third parties, that's political parties, that's special interest groups, that's super PACs, and that's those people that call themselves C4s, have no right to be on the airways. Stations can reject third party deception, and they have the right to insist on the accuracy of the ads that they air. How do we increase the likelihood that they do that? We help stations identify third-party deceptions. The major fact-checking organizations do it, and flackcheck.org is posting up those deceptions along with the call letters of stations that are airing them and contacting the stations to ask them to take those ads down and insist on accuracy before they put them back up. This is what our deception log looks like on flackcheck.org. Here's a list of stations that have aired like. this ad. Your viewers are counting on you to protect them from deceptive third-party ads. If the ad titled Romney's Worldview by the pro-Obama super PAC calling itself Priorities USA Action is still in rotation at your station, we urge you to consider taking it down. Why would a station pay any attention to an obscure website that posts up its call letters as it calls out deceptions certified by the major fact checkers? Because it's going to receive thousands of emails from people it values because it sells them to advertisers and as a result wants them to be happy viewers of the station. How do we encourage stations to keep third party deception off the air? We create a normative structure of expectations that says we value you to the extent that you keep the sleaze off the airwaves and to the extent that you fact check online and on air everything you have to air and everything else that's in the market. You do this by going to flackcheck.org. You put your name in, you select your state, we pop up your media market, we pop up the stations. You pick the stations you want to email. You hit next. We pop up a letter. You can strip it and write anything you want. You can say, I love deception. Air a lot more of it. Or you can say, insist on accuracy before you air third party ads and fact check on air and online. A lot of people have already done it, but we need more. I need you to work your networks to help us do this. This tells you a lot of people already have. Almost all the station managers in the country have already heard from us, but they haven't heard in the, at the level that they need to make this project work. Increase normative pressure for second purpose. Take the community's news networks, particularly the newspapers and community groups, and ask them to stand with us. The Radio Television News Directors Association has already done that. It's communicated to the news directors in those very same stations that this is a worthy effort. And it's communicated that they should fact check on air and online. New York Times and LA Times have said nice things about the project. We need more newspaper endorsements. We need more groups to stand with us because normative pressure matters. We also need to increase the ad watching. We believe in a carrot and stick approach. We are establishing the Cronkite Jackson Award that will be given jointly with our sister school at USC and will honor the network 
broadcast or cable that does the best job overall of fact-checking presidential ads in this election season. That's one set of institutional protections. Keep the sleaze off air for third parties, fact-check the rest on air and online, but there's something that's equally important. We need to increase the capacity of the viewing audience to detect deception and, as a result, to protect itself from it. And so FlagCheck.org is trying to post up what it's calling patterns of deception. So if you care about the issue, or it's a consequential race for you, and you see one of these, then go to the fact-checking sites and find out what's really under that ad and whether you ought to believe it. I don't think you're going to find somebody who has more of those attributes than I do. <laughs> Did someone call the fire department? Because it's about to get hot in here. bonuses to executives. I was briefed. I met repeatedly. I determined at my direction. I called President Zardari. I as Commander-in-Chief. That stopped with the sale of the plant to Bain Capital. They made as much money off it as they could. And they closed it down. They filed for bankruptcy without any concern for the families or the communities. But SDI almost never got started. When others shied away, Mitt Romney's private sector leadership team stepped in. Building a dream with over 6,000 employees today. Bain Capital walked away with a lot of money that they made off of this plant. We view Mitt Romney as a job destroyer. It's just incredible from when I started, we had close to 1,400 employees, now we're over 6,000. If we keep talking about the economy, we're going to lose. When Mitt Romney says, Planned Parenthood, I'm going to get rid of that. Romney is saying he'll deny women the birth control and cancer screenings they depend on. I'm not sure which is worse, uh, him listening to Reverend Wright or him, him saying that uh, we must be a, a less uh, Christian nation. I said that I'd go after bin Laden if we had a clear shot at him. And I did. And I did. And I did. And I did. To increase the likelihood that people will recognize the patterns of deception, we've launched an attack campaign against Abraham Lincoln in 1864. As those of you who are familiar with history know, if George McClellan had been elected in 1864, the country would have settled with the South without resolving any of the issues underlying the Civil War, and as a result, fought it again later at having expended all the lives and treasure on the first fight needlessly. In this campaign, we're trying to reinforce the likelihood that you will see deceptions even in ads that, are, that your own candidate is launching. Has President Lincoln given up? At a speech in Pennsylvania, he even refused to dedicate a battlefield still fresh with the blood of tens of thousands of Union soldiers. We cannot dedicate. We cannot concentrate. We cannot hallow this. <laughs> what do we really know about the woman behind Mr. Lincoln? We know that Mrs. Lincoln is a daughter of Dixie. We know that Mrs. Lincoln 
has three brothers fighting for the Confederacy. We know that Mrs. Lincoln even had a rebel's wife living in the White House. Gentlemen, when Abraham Lincoln signed the Morrill Act, university doors swung wide to welcome the children of farmers and laborers. Gentlemen, do we want the slack-jawed, small-eyed sons of cobblers running our courts? The doltish, grinning sons of coopers running our banks? Mr. Lincoln, we have a question for you. Why should we trust you as president, when as a lawyer, you defended whiskey-hating women who smashed up a saloon and admitted adulteress and a wife who poisoned her husband? Raises the question, whose emancipation is he going to proclaim next? He didn't know what he was doing. Didn't know how to march the troops. He forgot to even bring a gun with him. Didn't matter, though. We never saw a day of combat. Reassigned to the graves, Lincoln would later joke that the motto of the militia was, we'll fight till we run, and we'll run till we die. I can forgive him his cowardice, but not that. When I heard he was running for president, I said, you've got to be kidding me. That man... When he opposed the Mexican War, the newspapers called Lincoln a second Benedict Arnold. Now Lincoln has entrusted the Army of the Potomac to General Grant, who is so fond of the bottle. The newspapers said the Army was being ruined under the leadership of a drunkard whose confidential advisor was a lunatic. Let's imagine that the 21st century's Lincoln is running this year. Let's ensure that she's not defeated by political sleaze. Contact your stations. Urge them to reject third-party deception. Ad watch on air and online. And help us build public understanding of patterns of deception so that we're better protected from them. Thank you.